come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. All you got to do to help us out achieve this goal is to go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button or write us a review. All of that stuff helps us rise up through the algorithms to become the fastest growing movie review podcast on the planet or the galaxy these are the internet radio superstars holly michaela sean and i'm colin sean what's that t-shirt you're wearing there it looks uh very uh it's a very sharp t-shirt i'm actually naked colin i don't know what you're (laughs) looking at right now but But i noticed that you have a shirt on Um, underneath your button-up shirt, Colin. What is that? I've got a Saturday Night Freak Show t-shirt on. That's what? right. Holy hell. Where did you get that? I got it off our T Public store. <laughs> it's made of 100% like reusable cotton. It's got... Amazing. Yeah, Ooh. No gluten. Probably no animals no were harmed, and it feels so right that I just can't stop wearing it. I don't even wash it. Michaela, where can we Gross. get a hold? Of How many these- colors does it come in? <laughs> if you go to tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show, you will see all our available designs. Um, and you don't have to get just one and wear it every day like Colin. You could buy one shirt for every day of the week if you wanted. You I think we have enough designs that you could wear a different design every day of the week. Wow. Colin, I, didn't, I don't know if you knew that, but we, you can buy more. Yeah, or wash it. more than I one. Mean, they're washable. Well, good news, they're washable. I the sleep washable. on my Saturday night freak show pillow. I drink my coffee from my Saturday night freak show mug. I wear my. He pin. puts his onesie on his freak show baby. <laughs> yeah, he he might be he might be being sarcastic about the mug, but I do have a mug, and guess what? It's dishwasher safe, and it's great. There you go, <laughs> right. and the stickers really stick <laughs> there's all kinds of shit i think there might even be like notebooks and stuff too i don't there's so many options go look if where you don't believe us go look tpublic.com slash user slash saturday freak show all right well there you go uh so tonight we watched we watch movies on this show tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by holly holly what do we watch tonight tonight we watched serial mom Ooh, directed by directed by John Waters, making John his debut Waters. on the Freak Show. This is the first wow. John Waters movie that we've watched on the Saturday Night Freak Show. It is. I find that shocking. This is gonna, honestly, this is going to be the only John Waters the only movie one. we watch yeah. on the Freak One. Well, yeah, I was, I was is, literally texting the first with Michaela. Last. I was texting with Michaela, and I was like, "Okay, let's be real. I love Cry Baby, not love a Freak it. Show movie, and I have no desire to ever watch Pink Flamingos again in my fucking life." Yep. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's, I'm on the exact same page. I love Cry Baby, but it's not really a freak show. It's not a freak worthy. show movie. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, because I don't know, like, I haven't seen his later day stuff, Cecil be demented and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. To, uh, so I guess this is a, a good place to start. I mean, like, when, when you say the name John Waters, right, what who, who, what do you guys, like, what's the sense of this guy? Shock. <laughs> yeah, like, sleaziness, yeah. but, like, there's, mm-hmm. like, a delightfulness to the sleaziness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a happiness in the sleaziness. Okay. Not trying, it doesn't feel like they're trying to be mean about it. I was yeah, it's not about, exploitive. Well, well, I mean, it's not exploitive, but it's sleazy still. Yeah, but it feels like consensual sleaze, you know. But, yeah, <laughs> like anyone who's involved in the sleaziness is really okay with it going on. Yeah, like everyone knows what they're getting into in a John Waters movie, and they're okay with it. Like everyone's just like, we know why we're here, we know what this is about, and let's just do it. Well, that kind of was my question, because going into this, I mean, obviously, Serial Mom's from 1994, right? And at some point, John Waters, like, recast himself as, like, a mainstream or kind of slightly off-center mainstream (laughs) Hollywood guy with movies like uh, Cry Baby and Hairspray, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hairspray Hairspray was kind of the turn, because that was 1988, so that was kind of the first one to really show that he had a side that was not as gruesome, but had like 
like a almost like a wholesome charm behind like the sleaze. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, because it went hairspray, crybaby, and then this cereal mom. Right. So he had yeah. quite a run there. Yeah. Probably his best run. Well, oh, see, yeah, absolutely. That, that was the thing. When, I, when I was younger, John Waters was always associated. It was pink flamingos and female yeah. trouble and uh, polyester and all this other stuff, which I saw pink flamingos, right? I think, this, so does this sort of like a, one of those rite of passage movies that like, yes. if you're of a certain yeah. age, you had to watch it? Yeah, um, unfortunately, well, I got, uh, yes. I it's have one of those, like, it's one of those forbidden it. fruit movies, you know? It's like you hear all about it. You hear about the scene at the end with Divine, so you have to see it to, like, end. No. No. <laughs> no, you don't. But, Sean, I, I've, read an, I, I've read enough. I will not. Watch. Oh, you haven't but seen you know it. What, Sean, oh, no, Sean, I haven't seen it. You are correct. It. You are correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was one of the, uh, I mean, it was, it was, I think, historically of significance because it may have created the midnight movie. I'm not sure if it was that or El Topo or Eraserhead, but those are the movies that generally we think of in the seventies that would play like at midnight at movie theaters. And they were like transgressive, uh, yeah, you're not supposed movies. to watch this, but watch this. Yeah. yeah. And they found an audience. And I mean, some of those are just, I mean, that f- movie was just disgusting. <laughs> was yeah. like, I don't it's like this like, John Waters guy was my impression. <laughs> that movie <laughs> makes me as nauseated as nothing but trouble. It is on that same level of grossness, you know, Jesus. like for me, it's worse than nothing but trouble. Yeah. And that's saying a lot. Cause you know how much I hate that movie. It is worse because it's, real because yeah. that end scene legitimately is oh. happening that's why oh. it's worse there's so many scenes even before the end scene. Gee, okay well, anyway I'm, I'm glad i'm glad i have no mental images to to recall oh. you, know, oh, you don't need thank it thank god no thank god um okay so so he rechristens himself like the uh i don't know i mean he's still obviously like uh one of America's um, foremost purveyors of shock cinema, I suppose, yeah, right? Easily. And he's also, like, in uh, his post-film career, because I think the last movie he made was maybe, like, 2004, uh, John Waters is now kind of a respected uh, cinephile or uh, movie historian, especially of, like, exploitation movies, right? Yeah, I feel, I feel like most most documentaries or specials or whatever that feature filmmakers giving commentary. I feel like John Waters is, he's like the number one guy you call, right? He is. Okay. I think I actually like John Waters more than I like his movies. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I I love hearing him talk about anything. I will listen to that man talk about anything. He has great insights. He like knows exactly who he is and how he presents. And he plays into that. He's yes. a really likable guy, I think. He is. Like I was re- like I was reminded reading up on this movie like how much I actually like him. Just like interview questions and stuff. Like someone asked him if you could meet any celebrity, who would it be? And he said uh, Eminem because he once read that Eminem hated him and had no desire to meet him. So that's why he wanted to meet him. <laughs> I was it. like, I love that. Like, I just love him. He's such a character. Yeah, yeah this probably might be the first time I've uh, or it was probably the first time I saw John Waters was in an interview some behind the scenes documentary for some yeah. thing or I, whatever. Like I guarantee yeah. you, like anyone that doesn't know him by name, if you say the thin mustache guy, they're going to know who it is. Yeah. Right? He's been yeah. on the Simpsons. But, for yeah. Christ oh sakes. yeah. That guy. I mean like, yeah. Which is amazing to me that the guy, you know, to me, he's always the guy who made pink flamingos. And the fact that he is able to show his face is like shocking to me. <laughs> that he's on the Simpsons is like, okay. But you know, I mean, yeah. like, he's so a, affable. Yeah. And yeah. Nice yeah. And everything. yeah. Like he's not the guy you would say, think made those movies yeah yeah he's an enigma for sure so um as part of like his uh because i think um both uh, crybaby and hairspray were made for uh new line cinema obviously right it's kind of an indie studio but this yeah. i think was a columbia pictures release or something like that serial mom <clears throat> no it was uh, savoy? Oh, was it savoy savoy yeah oh, sorry savoy pictures. universal right um yes Okay, so he also got, I think, well, he had Johnny Depp, obviously, in Crybaby. You said that was before this. Who was in Hairspray? Mm-hmm. Divine, right? Uh, Divine was yeah, yeah. in all of time. his uh, older movies. Yeah, just. Uh, <laughs> but, he uses a lot of the same actors in all of his movies. He yeah. has like Divine. the John Waters stable. 
Yeah. Sonny Bono, Divine, Debbie Harry. I mean, Ricky Lake, Jerry Stiller. Yeah. Vitamin Vitamin C was in that movie. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Of believe it or not. I mean, Mink Stoll's in basically all his stuff. Mink Stoll so. is in everything he does, and like the reason that he is, that Divine is in everything is because they grew up together. They were like buddies growing up, so that's why they go hand in hand. This is uh, he's because uh, he's uh, he's one of those guys like George Romero. We said, you know, uh, regional filmmakers always makes his movies pretty much set in around Baltimore, uh, hometown of Don Dohler, director of Night Beast and the Alien Factor. Uh, <laughs> Baltimore's other favorite son. Um, right. <laughs> so this one's got Kathleen Turner in it. Yes. God, God bless her. Yeah. yeah, I love Kathleen Turner. Who's the whole the whole cast of this? We got Kathleen Turner, we've got uh, Waterston, we've got Ricky Lake, we've got Matthew Lillard. That's his uh, first movie, we're, right? Matthew yeah. Lillard's first movie. I think he had like a small part in something else, but this was like his first uh, build, like bit, top billing movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Tracy Lords, I think she's been other in other John Waters uh, movies. Um, oh yeah, she's in um, Crybaby. She's in Crybaby. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Patty Hearst. <laughs> yeah, Pat, Patty, Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst. Choice. Choice. <laughs> All right, so she was the juror, right? I was like, when I saw at the juror beginning, Patricia eight, yeah. Hearst, and I'm like, what? And yeah, She's okay. the juror with the white shoes. Okay, who wears her yeah, shoes and then in after Crybaby, Labor Day? She plays Wanda's mom. All right, uh, I am not a fashion person. Will someone please explain to me? I know I'm an idiot, right? I, I don't know what's going on in the world. Why is it a fucking crime to wear white after Labor Day? That's what they say. That They say that once summer hits, you're allowed to wear white, but you're not supposed to wear it after Labor Day. Like once fall hits, the season is done and you're not supposed to wear it anymore. That's that's seriously what it is. It's just, it's just that's all it yeah. is. Yeah. That's oh, all it is. Shit. That's all it is. But yeah, I mean, no I hard feel like fast laws. I feel like on the freak show, we've established it's a bad idea to wear white pants all the time. That oh, you're wait. kind of tempting fate. You're asking the yeah. universe, say, hey, let me shit myself today. Yeah. Like, there is, like, <laughs> wait, like whoa, whoa, the brown word? You're going to use the brown, the brown word, word on this I'm show? Sorry, the brown. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we established it before. Like, in my opinion, if there is one way to find out who is a sociopath, it is the person wearing white pants because they really think nothing bad's going to happen to them. Yeah. They have way too much confidence in themselves yeah. in the universe. Way too much. Yeah. I, if I'm wearing a white shirt and I'm going to eat something like pizza or pasta or whatever, I will take that shirt off and put a different yeah. one on because I know it's going to happen mm-hmm. straight up, straight up. Okay. I wore a white shirt to work the other day. And when I went to eat my salad for lunch, I took like my scarf out of my drawer that I keep when I'm cold and I put it over myself like a bit because I was so paranoid. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I should reason. do it for spaghetti. Yeah. Because no matter what, what spaghetti you, psychopath? I eat, yeah. it gets everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, of course just, it does. I, I haven't learned. Well, we found our sociopath among the yeah. freak show. I eat spaghetti shirtless. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's <laughs> all right. So when we make our when we make our Saturday Night Freak Show sexy calendar, Colin's going to be sure to eating spaghetti with a big <laughs> wad of spaghetti rolled up on. The- <laughs> we could what do. We could probably do a whole. Question. We could probably do a whole cooking calendar of Colin Topless. <laughs> I think, like, I get him out by the grill, smoking some meat. <laughs> There you go. The meat makes meat. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Can we sell this on T Public? Is that an option? I think so. Be. Well, there you go. I don't okay. see why not. It's a, it's, it's like as good as, as good as happened. <laughs> Done, right. deal. Yeah. Done deal. Done <laughs> deal. Um. Okay. So Kathleen Turner plays the aforementioned serial mom. Um, Her name is just Mom. I mean, yeah, it's Beverly, but she's just Mom. I heard that she was not the uh, top top choice for the role. <sighs> True. Um, I think Susan Sarandon was was yeah, uh, Susan, mentioned. There were several people mentioned. Uh, among the people mentioned, it was Meryl Streep, Kathy Bates, Glenn Close, and top pick was Susan Sarandon, but she she was too much money. 
Oh, it wasn't because she just straight up turned him down. It was a, no, like, she was she, too expensive. She wanted to do it, but it was too. Because I heard like, I, uh, well, I mean, she did Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like, why would she say no to this? You know what I mean? Like, it's. I feel like it's still up there with her. But yeah, she was too expensive. I heard uh, this is, of course, an anecdote. But I heard that Michael Douglas, who of course starred with Kathleen Turner in the movie that everybody most remembers her from, is that true? I was going to say it's Romancing the Stone. I googled her name and Romancing the Stone came up. Is she? Is that the role? you associate with kathleen turner honestly mine's just jessica rabbit, rabbit. yeah definitely but yeah it, it, yeah but um that yeah romancing the stone that okay. was the other one because uh because i grew up with it my parents used to watch a lot okay well apparently he tried to talk her out of uh michael douglas tried to talk her out of taking this role yeah that's um, true why i'm not entirely sure it's like uh he- he thought it was sleazy. He didn't think it was worth her time. And she completely disagreed and thought it sounded like a lot of fun. I suppose it depends on how you read a screenplay and, you know, know the intentions of the director going in. Um, right. I mean, so how would you describe this movie then? What What's the tone we're going for here? Black comedy. Is Satire. it? Satire. Yeah, see, I almost more agree that it's satire than black comedy. Black comedy is one of those things. I could be wrong. Right. But to me, a black comedy is one of those things that you really you don't like. They don't actually make jokes that you laugh at. You're like, oh, that's that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we should be saying that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's true. That's the face you make. You're like, mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> or maybe I got that backwards. Maybe you do like laugh at black comedies and satire is the one where you go, ooh, zing, zing. You got him. Well, this is a satire then maybe. Um, it's well. I think it's almost satire before the. the it knows what it's uh, satirizing, but before like it's funny to watch this movie now after the big true crime boom that's been happening over the past like five years. Yeah, this movie's kind of ahead of its time, isn't it? Way ahead of it. Like yeah. it was. It was just a smaller version of the hype we have now. But mm-hmm. watching it after the big boom, like it does feel like it's really ahead of its time. Yeah. Well, I remember at the time, because this was 1994, and I think this movie came out. I'm not sure if it came out prior to, but it was definitely in production prior to the O.J. Simpson trial, right? Yeah. Uh, which was basically mm-hmm. like, and you know, the other thing, like for some reason, I always associate with Serial Mom is Natural Born Killers, which also came out the yeah. same year and went after basically the same uh, similar targets, right? The media's mm-hmm. fascination with serial killers and kind of elevating serial killers to the rank of celebrity and a media circus that surrounds them and then okay so what i mean if it's a satire what are we satirizing what's the target uh i mean us really i think the people who put them uh on the pedestal yeah i think that's part of it yeah it's kind of it's going after like an american i I don't know isn't it i mean you guys listen to more true crime podcasts than i do i mean is it this is a global phenomenon or does america have like a singular obsession with serial killers it's pretty global it's definitely definitely global i i I mean i i think it's global but i think we're like i said with the boom we just had i think we're experiencing it I mean, I'm saying this because this is the only place I know, but it feels like yeah, we're having it say, like heavier here. I was gonna say we we're more cent- we're like we're central to it here, so we get we get the hype here. But I, right, I we also like- produce most of them. I mean, most of the <laughs> yeah. ones that get the headlines and all that shit. So I yeah. think we're more centralized to it. Yeah, well, then maybe more interested in it, and, and you know, um, I mean, because that was later on in the movie at the trial, and this uh, movie eventually, a guy says like, "We've got another face for the serial killer trading card set," and I'm like, "Oh, I mean, that's it, right? I mean, like, we're the culture yeah. that actually puts uh, serial killers on trading cards." <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, we are indeed. Okay, so this movie, to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's basically broken up into three uh, segments or three acts, right? Um, in mm. the first act, you kind of get the um, the serial killer operating. You know, nobody knows uh, that the serial killer is in their midst. Um, the second half has like this: the family dealing with the idea that, like, uh, one of their member, one of their uh, uh, family members is a serial killer, and the third half is like the trial, right, mm-hmm. of the and the media circus. Um, yes. All right. So this first uh, first third of the movie, why don't you tell us a little bit about Serial Mom? 
So serial mom, Beverly, she, she's basically June Cleaver, right? Like she's stand up citizen. Like she does everything according to the book and she expects everyone to do everything according to the book. You know, she's just, he's the perfect 50s mom, you know? So this is where the movie's getting its comedy from, right? It's basically saying this serial killer isn't motivated by some kind of, you know, sexual fetish because that would put us on the other side of uh, having any kind of affinity for her, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So it basically says she goes after people who are violating um, certain, what would you call them, cultural mores or, you know. Yeah, the the, the mores and the norms and all that stuff. She's Dexter before Dexter, except a different target. (laughs) She, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, because like the stepfather, right? He, she's in search. She has the perfect family, although it's yeah. not really directed at her family. Stepfather was like, "I'm going to kill to get the perfect family," right? She's yeah. like, right. "I have the perfect family," and it, she's targeting like other people in the neighborhood. Yeah, who I mean, the, the don't difference, recycle like, or yeah, like, you, <laughs> like you mentioned Dexter, and like the difference, you know, with Dexter is that he has this need to kill, and he's trying to find, find like his moral compass with his kills whereas she's just like like i want my like i want my family to have the perfect surroundings and i don't want them to be corrupted and you can't corrupt them so you need to go kind of situation yeah she compartmentalizes all this stuff in a really interesting way like they're not she doesn't really seem to see how they're like all these things connect you know right well, I guess, can you tell me a little bit more about that? I mean, just about her, um, like how she, because I was under the impression, like, this lady is cuckoo bananas. Like, uh, the, uh, you know, I mean. She, she is, but. I mean, like, she is, but. She, she is, but it's almost like. I, it's, it's, it's she's almost, got her it's, own. It's, it's compulsive. Like, like, you know, when you, I mean, I don't know how it is for everyone else, but like, sometimes if I want a haircut. Like I need to get a haircut that day, right? Like it's an it's an obsession. Like it, over, it overwhelms me. I'm like, I just need a haircut right now. I feel like that's her. She gets well. She's like, she's singularly focused. We've yeah, talked about this exactly. before. Exactly. Like Colin gets on certain things. Who's a serial exactly. killer now? <laughs> <laughs> but she she gets singularly focused to the point where she has to do the thing she's thinking about. Like yeah. it takes over her. Takes yeah, control like we, of her. So it's impulses. See, yeah, we see that instantaneously when when she's at breakfast and she's trying to kill the fly. You know, like we automatically get that sense of her when her family's sitting there having breakfast talking and she sees this fly and all she can think about, all she can process is how do I kill this fucking fly? Yeah, I thought that was Just a perfect like you, setup to like the whole really- theme of the movie in a microcosm. That was kind of brilliant. It was, you know, mm-hmm. this perfect yeah. 1950s, like, even though it's set obviously in the 90s, but, you know, family domestic situation where everybody's chipper and they're having their cornflakes and whatever. And in the middle of it, she's and just like, I got to kill this fly because it is upsetting the balance of my perfect yeah. kitchen <laughs> morning ritual. <laughs> I kind of love yes. that scene. And you'll you'll be happy to know that no flies were harmed in the making of this movie. They made sure to have an artificial fly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, the, did it true. have an American Humane Society logo at the end? I hope I hope they got it did. I think it was the ASPCA made sure they, did, they didn't harm a fly. They're like, no, it was. It yeah. literally was. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and that's the that's where the humor is coming from in this movie. It's that juxtaposition of the wholesomeness of of Kathleen Turner and her family. I mean, especially the way they the way they've shot. Um, the whole that whole beginning that whole setup almost like two birds would fly in and land on her shoulder like it's almost that picturesque and perfect yeah and then throw that in with the the hunting of the fly like colin said it is kind of the perfect setup for what you're going to get for the rest of this movie yeah, yeah. which for some reason like this reminds me i don't know if uh, this is a tangent or something but like david lynch is like the other filmmaker who i think of when i think about taking you know 1950s era suburban idyllic you know uh norman rockwell kind of uh suburbia and then going in and underneath it and into the like the like these people are all fucked up is what he's basically saying <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> um all right so in these opening scenes there's uh she's making these obscene phone calls to her neighbor dotty this hinkle was hilarious <laughs> This was, I, I don't know if we mentioned, but I had not seen this movie before tonight. This was my first viewing of it. 
Really? And you, what, really? 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 I, I remember it was constantly on TV when I was growing up. It was always on like fucking USA or something. But I just never got around to watching it. And I'd always wanted to. And it just seemed like the right time. But yeah, I'd never watched it. So this was all new to me. And this scene had me laughing so hard. The way she was so giddy making these obscene phone calls. <laughs> Hysterical. Yeah, because I know we're supposed to go like, oh, listen to Kathleen Turner and her potty <laughs> mouth, you know. Like, <laughs> but, um, and uh, you know, there's a bunch of uh, little um, dramas going on with each of the cast members. Ricky Lake is the daughter is fawning all over every single man who walks into the kitchen or in her life. She's dating some guy named Is it Chip? Carl. Carl, thank Carl. you very much. Chip is the brother. Right, that's right. That's Matthew Lillard. Uh, he is a horror movie uh, fanatic, uh, works at a video store, has a horror movie fanatic girlfriend, and there's oh, some... Oh, did you find this relatable? Yeah, because when they opened the door <laughs> and they had the Ingram box in the background, I'm like, oh, I remember them. They were a distributor. We got our stuff from... Uh, so that was a real <laughs> video store, as far as I'm concerned. This, yeah, I was going to say, that video store had some personality. That was real. <laughs> yeah. um, I miss those. But he has... Uh, uh, there's like a um, a comment on because if you I guess if you're making a, a movie about um, serial killers, there's that thing that you know if, if people who watch horror movies uh, are need psychiatric help, right? Because uh, Matthew L was it Matthew Lillard was drawing the pictures in school and the the teacher yes. math teacher calls her in. To <laughs> yeah, he was drawing Blood Feast, which he calls the Citizen Kane of gore movies. Which it like, is. calm down, dude. It's not it's not that good. <laughs> not that, that good. Is, no, it's no, not that good. It, but <laughs> as a, as a historical like, well, no, because we established it was actually Curse of Frankenstein on this show, right? The first mm. gore movie was Curse of Frankenstein, and yes. Blood Feast yes. came after. <laughs> I took it to like that. Well, okay. Maybe Colin, when I hear when I hear someone use Citizen Kane as an analogy, I think not necessarily the first, but the best one. Like oh, it is yeah. the highest the, quality version of that. The, is what the I think of. of it. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh, I always see it as the one that set the trend in some way. But uh, you know, um, I could be wrong. The and um, it could be well, it could be both. It doesn't necessarily have to be both, but it could be both. Yeah, because Blood Feast really isn't a good movie, but. I mean, hey, I know. I was like, movie. calm down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting real hype over a movie that's not that good. It's not even well, I'm Herschel starting Gordon to think Lewis's this best is... movie, and we haven't done any of his on this, on this show yet. No. I'm starting to think Matthew Lillard was uh, this is a prequel to Scream, and so this is kind of just setting up his entire character for that movie, yeah, basically. But, yeah, this is how he got hired. He was like serial killer adjacent in, uh, in Serial Mom. I'm sure it helped. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's out. So she, of course, you know, I mean, like, uh, th so then she kills the teacher, right? Mm -hmm. um, Runs him over. She goes around killing some other people also. I think, like, the big scene is obviously at the uh, antique mall where she finds uh, Carl, right, uh, dating Tracy Lords, And so she goes in and sticks him with a poker and pulls his gallbladder, his liver out, and uh, <laughs> oh, so all because he bought a, fra uh, a Franklin Mint Fabergé egg. <laughs> You're very excited no, about that. I love the specificity of it. I, I love well, that's, it. That, like Michaela said, I love the specificity yeah. of they love Franklin Mint. And this is only funny to me because Franklin Mint is basically a sham. They produce products that they consider oh. or they'll tell you is collectible oh. or rare. It's those, those trash key shops you see on like yes. late night TV. Yes, it's all the TV yeah. infomercials like only 2,500 like, of this gold coin were made. And, yeah. you know, it's those. And they want it's you to think that. Like, I love that they love it so kind much. Of shit. <laughs> They're like, yeah, oh my time God, it's so presents. valuable. Yeah, it's yeah. almost Time Life Presents kind of shit. The one yes. that always kills me with them is the 9-11 commemorative coin. Oh, Why do I want that? <laughs> Why do I want to have a gold coin? Because you're never mean, supposed like, to forget, America's Michaela. greatest ha tragedy, you know? Never forget, Michaela. Never forget. Yeah, never, yeah, yeah, it's, it's no one will let us forget. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're gonna. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, I may be skipping ahead here. The one that stood out you to are. me, she's a bird, uh, a bird watcher, bird aficionado, we're led to believe. <laughs> and so the the scene where you could just see the rage in her eyes is when she goes to a neighbor's house and sees that they're eating 
uh, fried chicken for dinner. And it just keeps cutting back to these close ups of like <laughs> these people tearing into the fried chicken and back to her in the window. And it's like, ooh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> more eating scenes. Yeah. Well, the, the whole the whole thing of this and what's great about this entire setup is uh, um, Kathleen Turner throughout the movie. We're getting little like um, little bits of the facade are like taken away. Like she's going to bed. Uh, with her husband, you know, it's idyllic and everything. She's sitting in bed reading her bird book, but it's revealed that she's like stroking the face of Charles Manson and everything. Uh, <laughs> Sam Waterston uh, goes through her drawer later and finds like a whole uh, file folder of newspaper clippings and a bunch of stuff. I mean, in there is a uh, holiday card from John Wayne Gacy yeah. that that John Waters had. I mean, like. He finds his land. So the facade is getting taken away from Kathleen Turner little by little um, uh, through different shit. Um, and it's it's nice to see her play that because it, she plays it so she plays the perfect mother so lightly and effortlessly um, that uh, it, it's a great juxtaposition between this other stuff that she does. Um, I yeah, she's got like that, love letter or cassette recordings. She's been a yes. pen pal with Ted Bundy. <laughs> this part, oh my god, this scene, I oh, was laughing amazing. so fucking hard at this mm-hmm. scene. The the like pinup photo from Richard Speck that oh. that I was not expecting that. Even though I've seen some before, so I totally forgot <laughs> that fucking sent me. And then yeah. The audio recording of Ted Bundy on death row talking about how lonely he is and how much he misses her. I was like, oh, my God, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Fun fact, voice of John Waters. Ted yeah, Bundy. yeah, I recognize <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but eventually the uh, circle starts closing in, right? Because she's picking off all these people in the neighborhood, which, of course, does give rise to a question that we asked on our chat while we were watching the movie, is this something that she has been doing for a while? Or is this uh, like she just snapped and started killing people? No, she's been doing this for a while. I have a feeling. Or if, if I don't know. I feel like she's this is not her first time. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't act like this is her first time. She's very comfortable with it. She's very like oblivious to the danger of it. Um, but actually, now that I said it out loud, that. That makes me think that she just recently snapped, that she's so comfortable with it, that she's kind of oblivious to any any um, repercussions. Well, she has been really communicating with serial killers prior to uh, the start of the movie, yes. right? So we know that. We assume that she's been killing people, but like there hasn't been this rash of murder uh, where she just seems to be going after the people in her own life. I mean, that's the thing. Obviously, it brings uh, the the police after her is that, you know, she's killing people that she knows yeah. <laughs> or she's had interaction with. It's quite possible. Yeah. Um. So in her family, like only Ricky Lake. Well, she seems to get the idea like fairly early on. Well, I don't know. Even for, I think she's the first one. The daughter kind of gets yes. the idea that mom is a serial killer right um yeah the way that each one of them react to this because you know they know that the police are kind of circling mom seems oblivious to everything right because uh, she never really acknowledges what she's done right this is the right the tone of the movie. <laughs> what did she say the uh, uh the only cereal i know anything about is rice krispies mm-hmm. after <laughs> Chip asks her if she's a serial killer, like things like that. She's like, oh, I'm so innocent. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's perfect. She's perfect for the role. I love her. She's yeah. Perfect to she's do that. Great. I think she pulls it off 100%. Mm-hmm. How she can go back and forth between the two. And she looks just like the perfect 50s mom. Yeah. Yeah, she really does. Well, she... um she ends up so suspicion is eventually cast on her. I think because of uh, was it because of the the flea market murder, and she's got evidence on her, and like her friends are like, "You were handling the poker," and then it came back all bloody. And yeah, the the first thing the first thing that um, tipped him off was that she, her her basically her car was seen. Uh, there was a witness that saw her run over the math teacher, um, and they're like, "Well, you're pretty much the only person with a blue station wagon." It was a blue station wagon. So that kind of tipped him off. And from there, she wasn't covering her tracks very well. Yeah. 
And um, so as the circle closes, right, and people start to become aware that Beverly is the serial mom, we have, I guess this is the second half, the uh, second, you know, uh, third of the movie is how everybody deals with this information because she's still her that we saw it from the first section. But now we're getting like the broader look at like how society is dealing with this. So um, Ricky Lake's like, you know, mom might be a serial killer. Dad is like, I have to still protect my <laughs> wife, right? Who might be doing horrible things, <laughs> but he yeah, still feels this is, like he's got to protect her. Right. This is uh, um, also a great A job by Sam Waterston in this oh, yeah. movie, I believe, as sort of the oblivious husband. Like one of the first lines in this movie is um, the police bring a uh, a lewd letter to uh, <laughs> to Kathleen Turner, um, <laughs> and it's got it's got the word pussy on it, and she's like, I wouldn't even write a say the p word, let alone write it down. And Sam Watson was like, No woman would. <laughs> like his his direct like his morality on what he think nobody would ever do that. Like yeah, and to see that his level is there that somebody saying that word would kind of blow his mind to realizing that his wife, his slow realization that his wife is a serial killer is fantastic. Like his faces and his reactions are priceless throughout this movie. Cause he's very much like, he's just as much fifties dad as she is fifties mom. He's very much like Gene Billikers. My wife's the serial killer. Like he's really, (laughs) (laughs) what's the one line. What that's um, that's the limit. That's what she said. Kathleen Turner, she's like, oh, that's just the limit. Like, as like, that's too much. That's a great line. Little things like that throughout this movie are, are it's the little, like, succulent details. And you're like, that's great. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, Matthew Lillard, of course, he, uh, uh, being a horror movie fanatic, becomes uh, like, you know, Mom, you're going to need an agent. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. uh, seizes on the opportunity for, like, this is the coolest thing in the world that my mom is a serial killer. Um, the 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 people around her, though, I, aside from the garbage, the two garbage guys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love that she befriended the garbage man. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, she was being a monster about her garbage. Holy shit. I would hate her for this too. Yeah. Like I, I have neighbors oh, neighbor. that are not good about their garbage, and I hate them for it. You know. What's the neighbor yeah, do? The, her whole, she, her whole setup with the neighbor is genius. I well, love the whole setup. Like dumping packing peanuts just out into your yard is yeah. unforgivable for so many fucking reasons. She's trying like, to get them alone. in the garbage can, but they're you know they're falling all over the place. She's right. trying that hard. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> try harder, trying. woman. Yeah, and the payoff and the payoff to that joke is oh, phenomenal. Like wonderful. the courtroom scene, it's like, uh, uh, what's her last name? And she's like, "Do you recycle?" And <laughs> like. Everyone is on pins and needles waiting for this woman's answer. She's like, <laughs> no. And they're all like, oh, <laughs> I have no room in my kitchen. It's I legit laughed out loud at that scene. Like laugh. I, I love, I love when th- in a movie, when things like that, like t- you're taken aback, but the, the people in the room are taken aback by it. Such yeah. little things like you don't recycle. It's very funny. Well, see, that's what I, I mean. I, again, maybe I'm an outsider to this or something. It's like I recognize what was happening in that joke. Like, you know, uh, you know, do your cycle. Then you cut to like a, a face of somebody leaning in. The other person leans in. The judge leans in. It's all silence. So we're drawing that moment out until she says no. And then I'm like, is this really that big of a deal? So what are we talking? Like, who are we targeting? That's, that's what what's, specifically what's, what's, are we going after? It's not because it's not Colin. John, the whole, think, or, do you guys do you guys ever think Colin has a chalkboard and on one side he's got written <laughs> knock knock and on the other side he's got the punchline and he's doing mathematical equations to try to figure out why it's funny. Yeah. Like, I think this is what yeah. Colin does in his spare yeah, yeah. time. He's I know. Like, that's why comedies, like, don't work. I don't want to solve for X. It's not funny. Colin, look at it this way. So I feel like this whole, like, court kind of thing scene that happens in this third act here, it's like kind of satirizing the court of public opinion more than it is the actual court, if that makes sense. Like, think about how, it, like you mentioned OJ, but think about how, like, we try people on social media or in public opinion right? before right. they even like, get to court, nothing, you know? Nothing is going to happen to her because she doesn't recycle. But 
everyone's gonna know she doesn't recycle. Yeah, I know. And right. That's it. <gasps> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we're saying that these are concerns that a majority of people have. That's why it's funny because we're we're talking. Oh my god, Colin! It's like listening to a no, robot. Colin. Okay, all right. Oh my god. Uh, we can't. No, we can't yeah, okay. do it, Colin. We can't do it. There's a funny scene involving Annie. <laughs> Is it? How would you know? <laughs> I was hoping you're going to explain it to me because oh, all right, all right. Big, she kills a person with a leg of lamb. That's hysterical. Is it? Yeah. You tell me. That's all right. Funny. Yeah. I mean, lamb, lamb is, lamb is lamb notoriously tough. So life, and she chooses the leg of lamb. It's funny. <laughs> it's also like, yeah, it's like a, it's like a housewife thing. Colin. Like come home and you know, the wife made dinner and the leg of lamb and she murdered someone with it. I mean, that's, would you rather have her just kill her with a knife? It's funny. You eat the murder weapon? But there's like a whole bunch of setup to this because that, that was like one of the linchpin murders, right? Because that was like the, uh, I think her son and his, his girlfriend are there because everybody in the family is like, we got to, you know, we got to keep an eye on mom <laughs> so she doesn't go out and kill somebody. Uh, Chip, the other Which guy. Which alone is, is great. It's like, right, you got to yeah. watch mom. <laughs> just to make oh, she, she got away from the murder someone. Oh, that's right, because she's going to go after her because she doesn't rewind her videotapes, right? I mean, right. I, oh, I can relate to that one, right? I remember the. Well, there you go. Right. How many yeah. people have you wanted to murder? <laughs> How many people have you murdered? So uh, Yeah, this lady sucks, Colin. She deserves she it. Suck. I know she has dogs licking her toes to clean her toes. So gross. While listening to Annie and screeching at the top of her fucking lungs. This is my nightmare neighbor right here. Like this lady. Oh, my God. (laughs) So fun fact. They charged they charged them sixty thousand dollars to use the song from Annie because this was an explicit movie. (laughs) Not worth it. Not worth it. You know what I say? That's why. Oh, go ahead. It's unpopular opinion or not, but Amy sucks. Yeah, I Annie hate that suck. fucking movie. No matter what version it too. of it is, throw it in the trash, man. I hate it too. Yeah, I'm with you. I haven't seen it since I was a uh, wee lad. I can't even remember <laughs> Annie. You can leave it there, Colin. You don't need to ever revisit yeah. it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I, I think. That's why I thought it was a Columbia Pictures movie, right? Because it's a Universal yeah. movie. It has a Columbia Pictures movie, and it's like this cost a fortune to get this in <laughs> your other movie. You don't have rights to that off it just yeah, automatically. Right? Um, but it's a big centerpiece deal because she's singing tomorrow, tomorrow, as she's being stalked by the serial mom, and all these other witnesses are trying to you know observe her, and it pays off in a scene where she clubs her to death with a leg of lamb. Because that's funny, and yep. uh, and then the dog eats it for the, the punctuation there, um, uh, and then she's chasing Scotty while her kid, her son, and his uh, girlfriend are trying to keep track of her. Where she's running through the backyards and everything, still going after Scotty, and they end up at the uh, at the the L seven concert. Yeah, but downtown before before then, there is a scene when the family is like sitting in the street like wait like trying to find her and then they see scotty's car drive by and then they see her drive by in the van that she just hijacked and you can see her in the van she sees her family and she waves and blows them a kiss and it's fucking genius and kathleen turner totally um totally ad-libbed that uh, her own and they didn't john waters didn't realize she did it until the screening and the audience laughed at it and oh. that's when he noticed that she did that. And I was like, she's a genius. <laughs> I love it. That made me laugh so hard. Yeah, they, uh, that's right. Cause you probably wouldn't be able to see through the wind, through the mirror or through, sorry, through the window in the, yeah. Until you actually see the thing back. Yeah. They ended up in an L seven concert, which is also why I associate this with uh, natural born killers. Cause L seven plays a big part in that <laughs> movie also. Well, that's right. Yeah. That's so right. what's going on with L seven's association with uh, well, uh, serial they killer popular movies. at this time? <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in this movie, they are not L seven. They have a different name. What's they do. Camel lips, right? Yeah. Camel lips. So we keep getting not, shots. Not only do they have a name, they have costumes. They have matching they, pants. They do. Yeah, with prosthetics underneath them, apparently, uh, to uh, accentuate. You think? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so I cereal, hope so. Well, Serial Mom is arrested at the at the concert after she sets the dude on fire on the stage, which L Seven thinks is awesome and spits uh, alcohol onto him or lighter fluid or whatever, and to keep the guy roasting, which would then make them accessories to murder or something like that. That's what you? I was thinking. Uh, I was just like, <laughs> well, how do they do this in car? And then she spit on the body, causing it to inflame more. Yeah, yeah. I was the gonna say, like, this, ate it up. you're associated now. Yeah, and even getting into that concert, there's already like her celebrity has increased to the point where like all the punks out front are like, "Oh, you're serial mom!" Like, you got to get into the concert. Um, so then the. So then they arrest her. Uh, oh no, that was uh, after the the whole church scene, right? Which was another satirical thing. The pastor's giving a, a sermon on uh, capital punishment, right? To do it or not, <laughs> which is like, as the good Christian, uh, you know, uh, a teacher, uh, why shouldn't we? Uh, because Jesus, let's do said, it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Love it. I mean, that, this is also a recurring theme in this movie because. <laughs> Uh, I think on the first TV clip way earlier in the movie, um, they mentioned something about a killer and Sam Waters is like, that person should get the death penalty, like right <laughs> off the bat. And then slowly he changes throughout the movie. Yeah. Like there's cutaways to him reading books on the subject and all that, wearing pins that say you know, gas chamber, but red crossed out. Like he's a very conflicted man throughout this entire movie. <laughs> Those are nice You're little details. Until it happens to your family, right? Yeah. So then the big the oh, trial of the century takes place, right? Where um, yes. the because uh, so she has a lawyer at the at the start of this, but because she notices that one of the jurors has the aforementioned white shoes after Labor Day, which she points out to the lawyer on a legal pad, and he's like, he reads it and he's like, okay, she's insane. she's not guilty by reason of insanity and so she (laughs) fires him and then represents herself and then then (laughs) this whole crazy thing kicks off Um, right then she proceeds to tear through all the witnesses of any of the murders that she's had she goes through the stoners are runner the teacher over with her car she goes through dotty hinkle uh she just gets to like cuss her out as a way to which okay this is one of my favorite things this is one of my favorite tidbits so the courthouse where they filmed this scene there was actually a woman that worked there named dotty hinkle get like, out at the courthouse really and yeah but she was so flattered that they were like using the same names she was like yeah use it and she totally signed off on it i was like that's amazing like what are the that's odds funny. that's not a normal yeah. name I like the symmetry too of her representing herself in court when Ted Bundy did that as well. Like yeah. I like that carry yeah. through. Like you know, you know that you know that was intentional. John Waters was such a huge, he's such a huge uh, uh, true crime fan. Like I know that was intentional. Yeah. Well, she, yeah, that's how, that's how he met uh, Patty Hearst. He went to her trial. Yeah, he used to go to trials to a lot and just watch. And he, he went was to her trial of- and he met her and he's like, "I went to your trial, and you should be in this movie." Yeah. He's one of those people that like travels the country for big, for big name trials. Like he's one of those people. I'd love to hang out with him. He sounds real. Like he has a million great stories to tell. Yeah. Right? Did I read? And maybe if you look this up, Holly, maybe, but I think he wrote a book called car sick. This was about his adventures where he basically said, fuck it. I'm done with all this shit. I need to get out of the house. And so he went hitchhiking across America he was picked up by like a future like uh, senator. He was picked up by a band. They just kind of like, and he just kind of wanted to wander across America yeah. and wrote a book about it. Hey, he sounds like yeah. an interesting guy, John. Yes. <laughs> right? He's awesome. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, but I guess that's the, the thing. It's like um, because of the cult of celebrity, right? Because she's attracted, like even her daughter is trying to sell merchandise based on Serial Mom. Uh, there's a book about her. And then Suzanne Summers is going to play her in a TV movie. <laughs> I mean, is there, is there anything more? Is there anything that makes this more of a time capsule than Suzanne Summers being the big name? That's what I thought. Honestly, that's one of my biggest issues with this movie is that kind of took me out of it a little bit because like, like, oh. she doesn't really fit with like a John Waters world, you know? Yeah. But I, but I love the audacity of that at the end. Like they've gone so far over into cashing in on this. Like the son's already sold the TV rights. 
Um, he's talking to murder victims' brothers about, hey, have you sold your rights away, right? And he's like, print or TV? And, like, they're going with that shit. Like, uh-huh. it's... And to have Suzanne Summers, I mean, it just brings in the, like, surrealism of the whole thing to have yeah, her there and, and it, at the trial being like, I'm going to play her and everything. Yeah, and it very much reminded me of, of Scream when Nev Campbell's like, oh, they're going to get Tori Spelling to play me. And then she does in Scream too. yeah. 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 Yeah, this is a movie that might work like 50 times better now than it ever did back in 1994. Yeah, because now we've actually seen this come true. Yeah. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because totally. I don't remember before, because that was the thing about the OJ Simpson trial was, you know, the constant coverage from the uh, inside the courtroom. I don't think that had ever really happened to that extent before. I mean, just. No, that, that had was, never happened. Yeah. When all did, day. When did the Menendez like during... brothers kill their parents? <laughs> I think that, that was later. Was it later? Okay. Yeah. I was thinking like, I, I was like, did Joey Buttafuoco get this much coverage? No, this was, no. The, the OJ trial was the first one that was heavily televised like that. Yeah. Like oh, during, daytime, during daytime TV, uh, yeah. they would just have the OJ trial up. The I was other gonna ones- say, there, like whatever channel it was, it, literally that's all that was on like 24 seven. They just showed the trial nonstop. Yeah. Now you don't have to do that. You just have, you go to ABC News' uh, streaming, you know, Facebook, whatever, their website, and they stream it there. So, I mean, yeah. now we've got uh, all the uh, the streaming options. Stop promoing your shit, Colin. Stop <laughs> promoting your, your ABC show. What is this? <laughs> so, um, so she gets off. That's the, the, the surprise of it. Is this a heroic, are we applauding, are we hoping that Serial Mom, uh, is uh, acquitted at the trial. I mean, I mean, let's There's be real. Not- in, in a in a real life situation, am I going to root for a murder? No. But in this movie, am I going to? Yeah, because it's fun. And also, I feel no. Uh, I don't feel bad at all that she used this she used the system to her advantage and got off. Like if that's but- our system and she exploited it to do it. <laughs> and the way then she- there you go. The way she. The way she was on the stand, like so much confidence, and she'd like look back and smile and wink at her family. Like I just, I loved it so much. Yeah, um, it goes back to what I was saying about court of public opinion. Like she was just able to be charming enough, you know, to get the people on her side, and that's all it took. Yeah, because yeah, she's like smoothing the jurors at the beginning of it. Uh, she's undermining all the witnesses. Uh, she has a basic instinct moment, which I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? <laughs> right? <laughs> and she discredits witness after witness. Imagine watching that as a 12-year-old and going, what's going on? Were you, were you 12 <laughs> what, when you saw this movie? Had you hadn't seen it. Yeah, you had seen it before. Oh, yeah. That's right. Holly hadn't seen it. Yeah. I had to yeah, see I've it. I've seen this. I've been watching this for years. So, yeah, yeah I, was, I was a little like, I don't understand. Why is she slapping her legs together? I don't. <laughs> I get. I get that it was affecting him. I'm like, oh, I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> this is the pervert who hangs out in the bathrooms and writes things on the walls, and yeah. So he's yeah. discredited. So she gets off, and um, I mean, basically, that's the big like. You know, she's out. She's free. You know, the, re- the reaction, but the reaction of her family is what sealed this scene for me. Because, because obviously, you know, most people's reaction, like, oh, mom's free. But they all kind of look at each other and like, oh, shit, mom has to come home now. Yeah. <laughs> because they know that she actually is a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the thing. Right. Because, uh, you know, it's like, well, you, you, it's like you're glad that she's free. But you also it's like they've been rooting for her the whole time. But at the same time, it's like, oh, yeah, it's over. I guess that yeah, means we're then, responsible for it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Ricky, Ricky Lake's boyfriend turns her. He's like, is she going to like me? And she's like, just don't piss her off. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, there's still some unfinished business to take care of. And that's that woman with the fucking white shoes <laughs> um, who maintains that fashion has changed. <laughs> but the serial right? mom's like, no, no, it hasn't. And clubs her to death with a telephone. Um, it's not really a gory movie. I mean, the only really thing that I thought was, uh, you know, the liver on the end of the stick, you know, kind of yes. thing. Um, so that's why it's like, it's not really a horror movie, right? I mean, it's like a comedy, straight up. Satir- satiric comedy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
But I mean, that basically is it. And she, it was like everybody there. I mean, cause there's a scream from the other room from the bathroom when they discover the body and it's like, okay, so right here in front of God and everybody, she's done it again. I mean, cause she can't control <laughs> herself. That's who right? she is. Yeah. So it's uh yeah. What was your favorite joke in the movie? Seriously, all the the serial killer memorabilia that was personalized to her, that was the funniest thing to me. Anything anything Sam Waterston did. His face when (laughs) when she turns around and winks at him and he goes (laughs) and tilts his head. He's just like what's going on? He has great reactionary comedy. He does. He's very good. When he's crowd surfing, maybe that's it. Where he's, it's from him running through the crowd and then it cuts to, hey, put me down. Like he's on the people. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, maybe that's a serial mom. Unless so. there's any stray observations, we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch the movie. So now you've been hanging in suspense while you're listening to this, wondering what we actually thought of it. How is this going to go? Will the Saturday Night Freak Show approve of Serial Mom? Well, you're going to have to wait and find out. First of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Sean was trying to summon Igor with his eyelashes, apparently, and it didn't work. But thank you, <laughs> I'm gonna Igor. Have to make up a new call for him, like, no, 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 or something to get him up here. <laughs> All right. Well, we should uh, let you folks at home know how you can join us in this exciting interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on our social media. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sat Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Sat Freak Show Yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Serial Mom, Michael Whitaker writes in and he says i like this or he says no i like this will what i like this <laughs> will be but uh, sorry sorry i'm just reading it as is but he will always consider hairspray to be my favorite john waters movie this does have a cool cameo from lesbian punk rockers l7 whom some people who some people know from the Shaun of the dead trailer and it's filled with the general lunacy that makes all of john waters movies memorable is hairspray is a favorite choice is interesting i'm curious yeah. to know more about that yeah that's why i was like trying to think like you know i think i've seen two john waters movies i've seen this and uh, pink flamingos you guys have uh you seen more than that you guys yeah, i've all... seen crybaby and uh hairspray so i've seen four okay. i've seen this and a dirty shame uh, yeah this makes this three no four Four. The same uh, hairspray, crybaby, this and uh, this. And, Pink, okay. Pink flamingos. Pink flamingos. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Don't that one. <laughs> all right. Um, Ed Snyder writes and he says, "Fun fact: I live in Northeast Baltimore County, where the movie was filmed. Ironically enough, I'm in the process of doing a filming locations piece on the film. Uh, he lives five minutes away from the Soupfin's uh, house. Apparently, he says if you guy and guys enjoy the movie enough, I can send you the piece once it's finished. If you want, well, I mean, oh, Ed, do. yeah, I mean, we would love to yeah. take a look at it. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah. That's pretty great that you're doing that while we're that." We picked this and you're doing that. So yeah, that's awesome. Right. Yeah, send that's us. Awesome. Next, we hope you'll visit the locations of Night Beast and report back <laughs> on those. Yeah. Uh, go to that go to that one field and see if there's any burn marks still left over. <laughs> uh Grant Parrish writes in and says, This is a delightful movie. It also taught me not to wear white after Labor Day. It's less clear on when you can start wearing white again. I would say probably Memorial Day. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. that's that that is the that's the standard. It's Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's the time frame. All right. Well see, there's things that you yeah. learn from listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh <laughs> Robin Linneman Silverberg says Pussy Willows Dottie. Pussy <laughs> Willows. It's a quote from the movie. You got that right. Pussy Willows. 
<laughs> I love how she baits her in that scene. It's so great. We should have also said that this movie starts with a disclaimer that says it's based on a true story, but that's all bullshit. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, it does. Yeah, it does that, and it's got times and dates at the bottom of the screen at the beginning of certain scenes and everything, like it's going through a timeline up to the murder. Yeah. yeah, and it's total bullshit. It is not based on anything true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Travis Legler says this is one of those movies I remember stumbling upon the USA channel during summer break from school in the late 90s when I was home alone I don't remember much about the film other than when I watched it then I had a sense of what the fuck am I watching I got a copy on iTunes for $4.99 during a weekend sale a while back but I couldn't tell you the last time I watched this movie or what the fuck even happens in it lucky for me and everyone else we've got the freak show to inform us good luck while we're here that's why we're here. <laughs> That's right. That's what we do. It's what we're doing for you. That's right. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Travis. <laughs> yes. Uh, Peter Gatt says, oh, a John Waters film. Is this a first watch for all of you? You'll never think of Annie the same way again. And then he also says, while rewatching Slugs the movie and listening to the podcast on it, I thought you'd, I thought, did you ever cover Squirm? And if not, will you? Maybe. Squirm is another I mean, movie I, about uh, you know uh, killer like worms. I've yeah, seen it. Say, like, we, we have to we have to put some time in between them, but yes. it might come up eventually. Like we had to wait a couple years after doing Slither, and it might come up. But I feel like there's always room for more like nature attacks movies. Yeah, always room sure. for those. Yeah, yes, we is. like it. Yeah, we uh, need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? I don't right. want to. I'm curious. Uh, well, about uh, so two weeks ago, we watched the movie Slugs. Uh, Andrew John says, I watched this today because of you. I had a blast. I don't know why I passed it up. I, it was way more gooey than I expected, and I love the gore. It's fun. It truly is a hidden gem. Yeah, it is. Uh, Joshua Connolly says, I love this movie. Great episode. And I have a hashtag justice for Pam in my letterboxed review. She deserved so much better. <laughs> she did. She really did. And uh, Pat Hatfield says, you got to write that giant slug movie, please. You can call it <laughs> slugged. <laughs> okay. There you twisted yeah. my arm. <laughs> That's right. We outlined a whole sequel. I think. Uh, on... Right after we finished ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so that means we're going to go around the room tell you what we thought in the lightning round of tonight's movie, Serial Mom, and if you should watch it, we're going to start with... Michaela. Michaela, what did you think of tonight's feature, Serial Mom? Well, I, I had seen this before, but it's been a while. Um, as we talked about, yeah, I've seen, you know, four John Waters movies total, and I feel like that's probably good. I don't really feel the need to reach out much farther than that. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, like... I think I like him as a person more than I like his movies. Um, but I think he is a great mind. I think he has great writing. I love hearing him talk about pretty much anything. I love that he is aware of what he looks like and how he comes off. And he just embraces that. And that is his brand. Like the way he has been able to define his brand across decades is incredible. Like, I think he was even in like the seed of Chucky or something as himself. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes. Like, the fact that he's able to keep that persona going for so long across generations is in really impressive. I and think he really that has had that mustache forever. The whole time. Whole time. <laughs> like, I, we might not recognize him without it, you know? <laughs> I, I think that Serial Mom is definitely one of his more palatable movies um, and more, like, accessible movies for sure. Um I think I was telling Holly, this is my second favorite John Waters movie behind Cry Baby, but like that's the also the end of the list. Like the other two I've seen, I don't really care for. So like yeah. of the of the four I've seen, only two I like, and this is one of them. I, I do love just like how much it reaches into true crime. And I love the black comedy. I, I love this like intersection of like uh, satirizing like that nuclear family in suburbia up against like our fascination with true crime and like uh, like how far we take it in America so far as like selling memor memorabilia and kind of making them into celebrity. I love pushing those two things together. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm kind of surprised it's not having a resurgence. Um, I don't know why everyone's forgotten this about this it. movie. <laughs> yeah. Watch bloody disgusting. 
Like I give it 12 hours from the time we're going to <laughs> tomorrow. There will be an article, uh, forgotten treasure cereal, mom, you know, capitalizes on true crime. Boom. With resurgence. Yep. It's just like, you're welcome. Yeah. It'll be word for word. What one of us said in our wrap ups as the headline guarantee it. Um, <laughs> So definitely check it out. Uh, I think there's a lot to enjoy here. If if you're not sure how you feel about John Waters, I think this is a good place to start because, like I said, it's one of the more palatable ones for sure. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna go with Sean. What do you think? Um, Michaela, I think you hit a lot of like you hit a lot of really good points with your review. Um, I personally, I love this movie. Um, I I grew up watching this uh, I'm from a young age, and while I didn't get all the jokes. Um, <laughs> Pretty much the idea of the perfect mom who's actually a serial killer goes a long way for you, um, starting at a young age. And, you know, it changes as you get older. Um, but, you know, watching it again more recently, like, I, this is like the perfect movie for me. Like, it's uh, it's it's the satire. It's aimed at the true crime. It, it, it um, you know, it kind of goes at us for, like Michaela said, what we do to serial killers and all that stuff. We... We turn them into celebrities and, you know, we popularize them and trading cards and whatnot. Like uh, this movie, like it saw it all, like it saw the little version of it and probably what was happening at the time. And it went big on it. And who knew that this is what like our world would turn into. It's prophetic a little bit, but um, the performances in this movie, I think are, are damn hilarious. Um, Kathleen Turner, I think is perfect for this role um in look in voice in in acting it's uh everything sam waterston i think is great um matthew lillard and ricky lake i think the kids are great i think everyone's doing great in this movie um it is john waters most palatable movie uh by probably by a long shot um i'm also not going to venture out into the filmography of john waters um like michaela i know him more as a personality that's how you should watch crybaby though sean crybaby is worth watching that that I can get into. That'd be fine. Um, anything else around there? Again, I watched the Dirty Shame and all that stuff. But anything earlier, I think I'm just going to give it a pass. But I like John Waters. I like him as a as a person and the you know kind of the information he shares with everybody. Um, he's uh, he's a statesman of cinema at this point. It's a weird state, but he's a statesman. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I really love this movie. I definitely recommend that you should watch it. I mean, go. Uh, uh, Screen Factory's got a great Blu-ray with some like great stuff on it. I suggest you go buy it. Um, I love this movie, and I definitely recommend that you watch it. So, Colin, what did you think of Serum? Well, I, this is where I was kind of going into this, going like, you know, I have a John Waters blind spot, obviously. Uh, the guy, just his films, the descriptions of them, the stuff that I've seen, the casts, uh, everything about them, I'm like... These just don't appeal to me at all, right? I mean, they're on a vibe or they have a sensibility or something that I'm just like, I'm not on that wavelength. Uh, Serial Mom, I suppose, now that I've seen it twice. Um, <clears throat> you know, and again, the only thing I have to compare it to is uh, is uh, uh, Pink Flamingos. So <laughs> I'm saying this is the more palatable uh, version. Obviously, this movie has become a cult classic. Um so this is like a hard place to be. My own opinion on the movie was it really did nothing for me. You know, I like wasn't really it was I was cold to the whole thing. And I'm not entirely sure why that was. Uh, I guess I'm still trying to process that and say, like, you know, well, I mean, was it because uh, do I have sympathy for uh, the serial killer or, you know, the you know, the mom? Because she's like not in her right mind, and like all this stuff's going on around <laughs> her. But I guess I did appreciate the uh, satire. I was trying to think of like, OK, what's the filmmaker's point of view who made this? Is this like, a, you know, does he have a very dire look at um or opinion of, of humanity, but I don't think he does. I think he does have a, he has a bleak look outlook on society, but not necessarily the individual people within it, which is like, that's a pretty like a uh, specific uh, boundary line, right? Where like he likes people, but he doesn't necessarily like the, uh, you know, um, how people respond to societal events or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I thought, you know, the, uh, the, I mean, it's, it's just everything about it is skewering targets uh, the whole way through it. Every single little scene is designed to, you know, go after some, um, you know, cultural 
uh, what would you call it? Like a, a something that we really hold on to is like this is the you know uh, like recycling, right? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Those little, especially like those. Yeah, those things in suburban life. You move to the suburbs, you're supposed to recycle, but it's just like yeah, which the, are all the, the uh, you know. I mean, again, that's the thing. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. He's like seeing the world through like this stuff is ridiculous, but we're all you know like focused on like ooh, if you throw your garbage away but you don't put it in the right bin, you're a social outcast. You know, and this serial avenging angel mom is gonna take you out because of it. Um, I mean, I guess that's funny, <laughs> right? Um, so I guess I would recommend the movie. I'd say you should check it out. It's uh, it's definitely uh, a well made, you know, uh, um, and and I think it, I think it nails its targets, which I think is why I'm saying I recommend it. Holly, what'd you think? Um, yeah, like you know, like I said earlier, this was my first time watching this, and um, it's one of those movies that I've always known, like. I should have seen this at some point and I, I was perfectly aware like that it was weird that I hadn't seen this because of all people like this is my this is my up my alley right um so I we had talked about it off like in our group chat or whatever um a few months back um and Sean said that he was gonna watch it and I was like no 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 it's on my list it's on my list <laughs> and then I then I promised to bring it within the next couple months um so, I, yeah, I knew it was time that I actually watched it. And I knew, honestly, it's just one of those movies that, like, I knew I was going to like it. I, I just knew. I knew what it was about. I knew some of the content. Um, despite the fact that it was, you know, John Waters can be iffy. I am not a Pink Flamingos fan. I do not like, I am not a shock cinema fan, really. I'm not. Like, I, uh, things have to have more substance for me. I don't like shock movies. They, they don't do it for me. Um, I hear there were a lot of substances in Pink Flamingos. There sure are. Yeah. Don't recommend that You want that substance, one. I think you got it. I did. Yep, it's there. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of Cry Baby. Always have been. I grew up watching that. So I was like, okay, I have a feeling that this is going to be leaning more towards the Cry Baby end of the spectrum than the Pink, Pink Flamingos. Um, and it, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's much more on that end of things. Um, and, you know, Colin, what you were saying about about his view like societal views and stuff i think the fact that he grew up in the 50s being like a misunderstood homosexual boy who was obsessed with horror and obsessed with all things weird like i get why he would have a different view on society and society making certain people an outcast for some weird stupid reason and it makes sense to me that that's his take on things and then he's using that in an ex, in a humorous expression now. And it just makes sense to me um, that that would be his viewpoint. Um, and I kind of like that he's, he's bringing satire in it to express that. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think there's some underlying things that maybe he's working out in movie and stuff like this. Um, but I, I think it's great. I think it's hilarious. I think it's, it's, it's clever. It's very clever. Um, and I think that's why Colin, we were kind of laughing when you're trying to understand the humor because it's not, you can't really explain it. If it doesn't touch you, then it's, it's just not your thing. Like, you know, it, there's just something about it. It's charming. It's clever. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this movie. It hit some, it hit all the things that I really, I really like it. Obviously we talked about several of us are big true crime fans. I'm a big true crime fan. Um, yeah, this this was a lot of fun. This is I, I'm sad that I went so long without watching it. I'm like disappointed that this is my first time. But I'm also you happy could have had years. Time. I know, I know, 35 years. <laughs> Never watched this. Well, I mean, I'm 35, but anyway. So yeah, I really liked it. I definitely recommend it. Good stuff um, for sure. I think everyone should check it out. So yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, yeah, we're, we're freak show approving uh, Serial Moms. So that means you have to watch, <laughs> you have to watch it. Right, that means you, if you listen to this episode, it means you have to watch it. Um, that's, that's the curse. That's yeah. the rule. It's illegal if you don't, actually. Yeah, not very many people know that, but it is actually against the law. So. <laughs> yeah. Those are the rules. All right, so that means uh, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by. Michaela, what are we going to watch next week? Well, you know, we're going to spend a little bit more time in the suburbs with perfect families. We're going to watch The Stepford Wives from 2004. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you mean I the one with fake hair? Yeah. Well, you can yeah. compare and contrast that because I didn't we? I think maybe we did the Stepford Wives, the original we one, did. on this yeah, show. I, okay, I, so there you go. I brought the original a few years okay. ago. All right, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Compare and contrast. Go back and listen. You got some homework this week. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. So, the Stepford Wives, two thousand and four, with Matthew Broderick and Nicole Kidman. Frank Oz's Faith Hill. movie. Faith Hill, Christopher Walken, John Lovitz. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, oh no. Well, okay. That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.